We're gonna pretend like I didn't drop every single book. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and welcome to this video. Before we get any further into the video, I do want to let you all know that today's video is being brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform to help you build your brand or your online business. It's an all-in-one space for you to engage with your audience, create a website, sell your products, or any other type of content that you create. So again, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and we'll get more into them later in the video. One of my biggest recommendations if you are trying to get into reading or if you've been in a reading slump for a really long time and you want to get yourself out of it is to to read short books because sometimes the satisfaction of completing a book can motivate you to continue reading and so today I thought I would give you all some recommendations of some of my favorite short books to help you get your reading momentum back and to hopefully help you accomplish all of your reading goals for the year. All of these books are under 250 pages so they are definitely very short and some of them are even under 200 pages. You can read them very quickly. Some of these I've read in just an hour or so but you can easily read all of these within a day. I have a very wide range of genre and category here so I think there will be a little bit of something for everyone. So without any further ado let's get into all of my short book recommendations. The first book I have to recommend here is a classic that I read very recently and has now become probably my all-time favorite classic book and that is none other than The Picture of Dorian Gray. I think the length of this book will vary depending on which edition you get um, but my copy is 239 pages. It's very short, it's not long at all, and the story is like very easy to get through. It's not super dense or anything so you can fly through this one. I'm fairly certain at this point most most people know what The Picture of Dorian Gray is about, but for anyone who doesn't know, because I didn't know before I read it because I never read the summary of any book before I read it, I will give you a brief synopsis. This is a like gothic horror novel set in the late 1800s and it follows around these like British aristocrats. Would you call them aristocrats? They're very wealthy. <laughs> and it revolves around this portrait that one of our main characters paints of the character Dorian Gray and it's all about beauty and his own obsession with his beauty, everyone else's infatuation with his beauty, so it's very much like like a social commentary and like a philosophical take on the concept of beauty and how we value that in society and it's just so good. Again, I'm sure plenty of people know what this book is about. I did not know what it was about before I started reading it and so I was pleasantly surprised. I really really enjoyed this. It was such a quick read. It was very entertaining to me. The plot was very engrossing. I was very invested in what was going to happen next and so it was a page turner for me. I loved the characters. I loved the themes and motifs that were discussed in here as well. So it was all around just such a fun reading experience experience and definitely motivated me to continue reading. Plus, again, super short book. You'll get through it really quickly and I could not recommend it more. Again, probably like my favorite classic now. It's hard to say, but like it's a kind of a tie between this, some Jane Austen, and like Rebecca, but this is definitely up there. <laughs> all right, next up I have one of my favorite books of all time, and I think a book that could be considered a modern classic. I'm pretty sure this is considered a modern classic at this point, but that is none other than The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This book had such like a profound impact on me circa 2012 when I first read it. What year was I in sophomore year of high school? That's when I read this book. <laughs> this book is only 213 pages, so very, very short, very quick read. The entire book, if you haven't read it, is just composed of letters. It's just our main character, Charlie, writing letters to someone who's just addressed friend. So it's a very quick read because at times it's a little bit like stream of consciousness since it is Charlie just kind of getting his thoughts and his emotions out, even though there are times where he is describing like a um, experience that he had or an event or something that happened. Sometimes it really just feels like you're in his head. So for me, at least personally, those books go by really quickly. Of course, like I already said, this is a very well well-known and well-loved book at this point, um, so I feel like most people know what it's about. But if you happen to not know what it's about, it is about this boy named Charlie in his freshman year of high school, and he's kind of a loner and an outcast. He doesn't really have any friends, but he ends up becoming friends with this group of seniors, and um, he finally realizes what it's like to have friends and to have like that kind of community and that love. And it's about his own trauma and the things that he's experienced in his life. I would put a heavy content warning on this book for suicide and um, CSA, so just be open of that before you read the book, but it's one of my favorite books of all time. It has stayed one of my favorite books of all time since I read it when I was in high school, and I just love this story. So if you're looking for something that's very emotional, that will very likely make you cry, um, but it's also a very quick read, I highly recommend The Perks of Being a Wallflower. All right, next up we have another book that I read very recently. A lot of these books are actually a few books that I read pretty recently because I've been reading a lot of short books lately. I've just really been enjoying the short books. I feel like books that are very concise and to the point and can convey an 
entire story in like 200 or so pages. They're always so impactful. The writing is typically really poignant and I like stuff like that. So that's why I've been reading a lot of short books lately. So that's partially why I was inspired to make this video. Um, but back to the point, the next book on this list is Convenience Store Woman by Saya Kamarada. This book follows the story of this 30 something woman who is unmarried and has no career or like social aspirations in life. She just works at a convenience store and she's very much content to continue working at her convenience store. It is only 163 pages, so very, very short, under 200 pages. I read this in like two hours, but I loved it. This book is very much like a critique of capitalist society and how capitalism puts these pressures on us to conform to what it expects of us and what it wants us to accomplish for it and how we live in a society that's structured in a way that um, wants us to conform to these social norms and it follows the story of somebody who does not necessarily fit those norms and has no desire to fit into any of those norms. Um, and I loved it. It's very funny. I think that it's very thought-provoking. At first when I read it I wasn't like super super into it but then a few days after I'd read it I was still thinking about it so it was constantly on my mind mind and I feel like it's something I would read again because I liked it that much. I really really enjoyed this book. I highly recommend it. Um, this is translated from Japanese and a couple of the other books on this list will also be translated as well. I've been super into translated books recently. It just they're so good and I'm tired of only reading western literature so I would like to read other things too. But yeah truly can't recommend this enough. It's super fast-paced book. You'll finish it very quickly and I just love the discussion that this book has and the questions that it brings up. I found it to be incredibly relatable, um, but also just very enjoyable. Next up is a YA contemporary that I read several years ago and really loved back then and I just haven't talked about it recently and I remembered that it's a very short book, so it's a good one to recommend for this video because this book is excellent and that's Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This book is only 210 pages, so again another super short one, but this follows the story of this boy named Justice who is 18 years old. He's like headed to an Ivy League college and then one day he becomes a victim of racial profiling. So he ends up writing letters to Martin Luther King Jr. and he's trying to like work through his own emotions and his own um, thoughts and experiences as a black teen boy. And it's just such a good story. If you haven't been able to tell from a couple of the other books on this list, I really love books that are in the format of letters. I just think that that's such a unique and very personal way of telling a story. And I really like books that are like that. And this is one of those books for sure. Besides the fact that it is really well well written and I just like the concept of the story in general. I just love the fact that it's composed of letters. So yeah, highly, highly recommend Dear Martin. Obviously it discusses really important social topics about racism, police brutality, and what it's like to live as a black teen boy in the US. It's really well written and incredibly emotional. So yeah, if you're looking for something along these lines, something that covers social issues as well, highly recommend Dear Martin. This is a great YA novel. All right, next up I have a nonfiction book that I have talked about in a recent video but I will talk about it again here because I love this book and I will recommend it any chance I get and that is Ace by Angela Chen. This is a nonfiction book about pretty much exactly what the title says, what asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex. It's incredible. I have recommended this to like everyone in my life and I'm trying to get like everybody to read it. I got my mom to read it. I got my sister to read it. I'm gonna try and get everyone to read it because I think everyone should. It is also a super short book so maybe that will motivate some more people to pick it up. It's 188 pages I think. It's very very short. It's not gonna take you a long time to read. It's also not super dense um, so it's not like difficult to get through despite the fact that it's nonfiction. And I just think this book does such an incredible job of discussing asexuality in a very approachable way with really Really accessible language and um, in a way that it's just meant for everyone and anyone to pick up and read if they are curious about asexuality, whether it's questioning themselves or if they know somebody in their life who is ace or if you just want to know more about something you don't know about. If nonfiction is your thing, even if nonfiction isn't your thing, I feel like anyone would benefit from reading this and I also just think it's an enjoyable read. All right, next up we have another book that I read very recently and have talked about very recently, but it's short and it's great so I'm gonna recommend it in this video again. You can deal with me repeating books because I can only read so much. So if I recommend some of the same books multiple times across multiple videos, 
It's because I like them and I really want you to read them. <laughs> but this book is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is another translated book. It's translated from Japanese and it follows the story of this coffee shop that can transport you back in time. And we follow around these few characters who are all somehow connected to one another and each of them for their own reasons wants to travel back in time. The book is only 213 pages, so very, very short, a super quick read. I read this easily in like a couple hours, but it is such a beautiful, beautiful beautiful story. I absolutely adored it. I loved the relationships that were explored in this story. I thought that it did such a beautiful job of covering multiple different types of relationships, and I loved each individual story, but what I loved the most was how they all connected to one another. I just thought it was so well done. It was very emotional, but also very, like, peaceful and happy. This book didn't really make me cry, but it did make me like emotional and tug at my heartstrings. So if you want something like that, something that's not overwhelming in terms of emotion, something that probably won't make you sob your eyes out, but will definitely make you feel, um, I highly, highly recommend checking out Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I'm very excited to read the sequel. There's like a sequel to this, which has more stories about the coffee shop. So I've already ordered that. I'm already going to read it because I loved this that much. All right, next up we have a book that I have been recommending for several years now, and I will continue to recommend it because it's incredible. Um, and that book is none other than Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is one of my favorite books of all time and I love it. It's so good. This book is 245 pages, so it's a bit longer than some of the other ones that I've recommended so far, but again, still not very long. Anything that's under 250 pages to me is a short book. If it's like above that, it's starting to get longer. Once we hit 300, I'm like, okay, that's not necessarily long, but it's not short. But under 250 is pretty short to me, and this one is pretty short. It is also a collection of short stories. So technically, if you didn't want to read all of the stories, you don't have to because they're not related to one another. Um, you could just pick up a couple of the stories in here, and they're just all so, so good. Carmen Marie Machado is easily one of my favorite authors of all time. I will literally read anything she writes. This book has some like sci-fi, horror, comedy, feminist critique. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It has a little bit of everything. And I'm wearing a green ribbon in my hair and there's a green ribbon on the cover of this because there's a story about a woman with like a green ribbon tied around her neck, uh, which is one of my favorite stories in this entire book. It's so good. So yes, I highly, highly recommend this if you're looking for a short story collection that um, spans across several genres that's just probably unlike most things you've ever read, um, but will definitely capture your attention and keep you reading. This book is excellent and I think everyone should read it. It's wonderful. Um, cannot recommend enough. Cannot recommend Carmen Marie Machado enough. I could also recommend her uh, memoir as well in the Dream House. That's also pretty short. It's like 200 something pages. So would recommend that as well. But for this video, for the sake of this, I am going with Her Body and Other Parties because it's been a bit since I've talked about it. So yes, if you want a short, short story collection, that's so hard to say, um, then definitely this would be my recommendation. All right, and then next up we have another book that I have talked about countless times at this point, so I'm not going to spend too much more time talking about it because I've mentioned it so many times on my channel at this point, um, but I love it, so that's why. And it's very short, and that's none other than On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. If you want a sad book about the, like, immigrant child experience that's incredibly poetic, beautifully written, just beautifully, beautifully written, that again is in the format of a letter. Can you tell that I have a type? I really have a type. I'm really noticing that with this video. <laughs> then this is your book. This book is incredible. It is so good. I will read everything that Ocean Vong writes. He is a master of prose and poetry. This is very short. It's like 242 pages, I think. Yes, 242 pages. So again, under 250 pages. You can read this very quickly. And if you want to feel feel seen as the child of immigrants, this book will definitely do that for you. At least it did for me. <laughs> Before we get into the last couple of books, I want to once again thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Like I mentioned, Squarespace is a platform for you to create your own website, engage with your community, grow your business. Some of my favorite features that Squarespace has are the blogging tools. I've actually considered starting up like a blog or like a newsletter or something recently, and I feel like using Squarespace would make that super easy because you can share photos, stories, videos, all kinds of updates, and you can schedule 
schedule your posts as well, so it's very easy to use. And along with that, another feature they have are email campaigns. And so if you wanted to start up a newsletter, you can completely customize it and use their email campaigns. And there's a feature that allows you to connect all your social media accounts so that all of your social media accounts and posts and stuff can be directly translated onto your website as well. So if you're interested in trying out Squarespace for yourself, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash a clockwork reader to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll leave that link and code in my description box, so be sure to check it out there. But again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And without any further ado, let's get into the last few books I have on this list. All right, and then last up, I have um, two quick recommendations. You can honestly pick up either of these. And this is also kind of just a general recommendation as well. Um, but that is to pick up poetry books because poetry books are typically really short and you can read them really quickly. But these two are some of my favorites by one of my favorite poets. Um, and that is Love and Misadventure and Lullabies by Long Lev. I love Long Lev's poetry. As you can see, these like super old tabs in the top. I've been reading these since I was in high school. I've had these since my senior year of high school and I was obsessed with these back then and I still love them now. I love her poetry. I think she's such a good writer. I wouldn't call her style very like Instagram poetry. I would call it more like Tumblr poetry because I feel like that's where she derived from. Um, but yes, highly, highly recommend these. Um, these are both under 250 pages. I think Love and Misadventure is even shorter. Lullabies is 231 pages and Love and Misadventure is 155 pages. So again, both under 250 pages, both very short, both very quick to get through. Personally, my favorite is um, Lullabies. As you can see, there are like a ton of super old tabs in the top of this and it's all like fading and stuff because I've had it forever. Um, but yes, highly recommend either of these or any of her other poetry books, honestly. So yeah, these are just two more very fast reads that you can get through very quickly. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of short book recommendations for you. I hope that you found this list somewhat helpful and there were some new books to you and um, maybe this motivated you to pick up some more short books because I really love short books. I feel like a lot of the time people think that if you're reading a book with 200 or fewer pages, then it's not really a book. But some of these books are honestly some of the best books I've ever read. And if you can truly tell a full complete story in like under 200 pages, I think you've done your job and it 100% still counts as a book. Like it's a completed book. They wouldn't publish it if it wasn't a completed book. <laughs> but yes, I love a good short book. I do also love long books. So if you are interested in some recommendations of very long books, like 500 plus page books, let me know in the comments down below and I can definitely make that as well. Or if there are any other specific type of book recommendations that you would like, please feel free to share them with me and I will try my best to round up all of my recommendations for you in a future video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, I am at clockwork underscore reads on pretty much every single platform. Also, all the links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you.